Oh, Zeke's blowing up. Honolulu, Hawaii. It's somebody, a robocall. Somebody with some resort they want me to come to a timeshare for, probably. <laughs> <laughs> Did you put in for those things to win a free car again? Johnny, time I put in for that, I use your name and number. I use yours. <laughs> The Williamson County Fair just happened, maybe, and they're calling from that. Hello, hello, everyone. My name is John Edwards, and with me is Zeke Baker, and together we make the Dad Shrinking Bourbon. Wherever you are, whatever time it is, thank you for making us a part of your day. How are you, Zeke Baker? You know, we're back in a happy place to a degree. It's just us. We don't get that that often and, anymore. And we're obviously still in Nashville for the most part, folks. And what I, what I was alluding to is we're just here with no agenda or or any uh anything else to to spend our time or attention on other than a simple. Three blind tasting sent in to us by a listener. We have no clue what's in there. Our friend Kyle, Zoli Woli. It starts with a Z, and, and my apologies. I, I really can't say it. And I, forever to John, I've just said, we've got that blind from Kyle Zoli Woli, man. I don't know. <laughs> we got to do this sometime. It's been sitting here forever. So, Kyle, if you are listening, thank you so much for sending this to us. It's like Zadrowski or something like that. So, Kyle, thank you so much for sending this in. If you do have a name like Kyle's, uh, a pronunciation guide when you send the blind to us, would be appreciated. I'm not sure it would do any good, though, if they heard you say Tark on that episode a while back. I, I said his name right. <laughs> That's all people know. I, anything that went out on the air, I said his name right. But again, thanks, Kyle. Honestly, our sincerest apologies on taking more than a minute to get to this, but it, it did not go to waste. We have kept it saved in pristine condition and are happy to finally get to this today. And I think one of the things that we want to tell all of you is, you know, we started as a blind whiskey tasting show. We always love blinds. I mean, we always love going back to blinds. We're never going to say no when people are in town and they say, hey, we want to sit with you and talk about our whiskey. We're always going to sit down and have that conversation. I think moving forward, though, Zeke, what we want to do is have one show a week be more of an interview if possible, and one show a week be more of a tasting slash review if possible. Now, we might not have an interview every week. Some weeks might be two tastings, but we don't want to give you interviews back to back. That's something that I think we want to stay away from because they could be, man, we have some that go on for an hour and a half. Well, and I mean, let's be honest, at the end of the day, we're just happy to get out of show a week at times. We've been there before. In case anyone hasn't, you know, picked up on the side or message, just a lot of times things aren't necessarily planned. John or I get a text the day of, the day before from a local rep. Hey, someone's in town. Yeah. They love your show. We kind of forgot to mention that to you, but can you record tonight or tomorrow night? If things ever seem on the fly or or somewhat not rehearsed or organized, they probably aren't, but... (laughs) Hopefully it comes out pretty good, and uh, we we thank everyone that's continued to listen. No, we spend a lot of time, though, because we do our research. We spend a lot of time on the back end making it seem like we don't spend a lot of time on the front end. We want everything to be loose on the front end, but we put a lot of work in. So when people tell us on the last day, like, hey, someone's in town, it's like, oh, shit, I got to go research everything I can about this person before 9 o'clock tonight. So I'm sitting there watching, like, Sophia's on Miraculous now. That's a new thing. It's the Tales of Ladybug and Cat Noir. It's on Netflix. And I posted it in our Facebook group, the Dad Drinking Bourbon Facebook group. And apparently a lot of other dads know my pain. This is a French show that was dubbed in four other languages, including English. And now Netflix has bought it and continued to put out new seasons of it. It's actually kind of the least annoying out of shows I could be watching. It's either that or Barbie right now she's really into barbie so wait till your daughter gets a little bit older it's gonna be fun Mm, we'll see i don't know layla's a little mean but as i'm watching miraculous i'm also studying up on distilleries and taking notes and getting things done speaking of getting things done let's get a couple admin things out of the way before we actually get into this blind i want to remind you that we are sponsored by cashcartel.com the largest online premium spirits marketplace. They're like an Amazon. They're getting people together. They're a facilitator. They do their best to recommend price points, but all the prices are set and dictated by their retailers that are on their site. They're probably 
not the place you want to go if you're a super big whiskey hunter, but they're looking for hard to find products or prefer convenience. You know, a lot of it is the convenience of having liquor shipped right to your door. Allocated items, limited releases, but also your lower end Smirnoffs, your Tito's, your Svetka vodkas. They're challenging the industry standard, setting a new baseline of how spirits are marketed and sold by focusing on the customer and not them. Go ahead and follow them on Instagram, Cast Cartel, see for yourself, engage. You might even receive a free sample from them to taste and review. But they also know shipping is everyone's number one turnoff. So they're doing their best to offer promos and all sorts of things to help get you free shipping. But there's a lot of good stuff on cascartel.com. Go ahead and check them out. Get liquor shipped right to your door. So another thing I want to mention before we get going on this blind is that Zeke and I will be podcasting from Bacon and Barrel. That is September 27th here in Nashville, Tennessee. There are going to be over 50 whiskey and bourbons, 20 local restaurants, each making a bacon or pork inspired recipe Mm. for attendees to try. This is all to benefit 10 Green. So it's actually a benefit. Zeke and I will be there. We will be eating all the bacon and pork. We'll be interviewing people. I know already there's a special bacon that we're going to get to try. I'm excited for that. We might need a couple of uh, wheelbarrows or maybe a front end loader, something with a nice bucket. I know. And then I have to figure out how to get up super early and drive to East Tennessee the next day to do Heritage Days out in Pigeon Forge. But the Bacon and Barrel Festival in Nashville is September 27th from 6.30 to 9.30 p.m. at Green Door Gourmet. Go ahead and check out more at baconandbarrel.com. That is baconandbarrel.com. Now that I got all of that out of the way. Is it time for the booze? It is time for the booze. Let's go ahead and have some. All right. So we're going to try and make this as hopefully least confusing as possible. We're, we're going with a little bit new method here since it has been a minute since we've done a blind. If you don't like it, send us feedback as always. If it doesn't make sense to you guys, then there's no point in us to going through things. Well, this is the same method we have been doing. We've always been announcing oh, Maybe what I they just were. forgot what it was. You forgot what it was. So what we are going to do real quick, three of them here, we've been sipping these as we've been talking. We've been writing down some notes. Zeke has an envelope, and I always worry when... The listener sends the envelope to Zeke instead of me, but this is a sealed envelope that he has signed, and it says Kyle Zoli Woli on the back. Kyle, thank you so much for sending this to us. It is a sealed envelope. I have verified that it is sealed. We are going to rank which ones we like, one, two, and three, first, and then we will open the envelope, and then we'll give tasting notes after we've opened the envelope so that you all know what the hell it is we're talking about when we give the tasting notes. Well, my thought was even kind of a one-up on a rank. And let's just say empirically, this bottle costs 50 bucks. Which, if any, are you buying? Okay, that's simple. Bottles cost 50 bucks. If I'm buying anything, I'm buying A. Same. The only thing I'm buying out of these three, and I think it's very simple, the ranking for me, I liked A, okay. Yeah, I think at 50 bucks, I I could go with A. And I wasn't touching B or C. That's kind of the way I felt. But let's go ahead and open that envelope and see what the results are. See, sealed and everything, John. Signed, sealed, delivered. It's yours. Here's a lot of notes on here. Yeah. John and Zeke, thank you again so much for the samples of Peerless and Mictors. It is truly a credit to the bourbon community and the industry to have y'all around. Ah, the answers to the blind are on the back of this card. <laughs> Zeke wasn't meant to read the whole beginning of that. Uh, you know, I, I'll share some love. Thanks, Kyle. A, Baby Saz. B, a Knob Creek Rye pick. C, a Willet Family Four Year Small Batch Rye. That is very, very interesting. <clears throat> I'll, I'll admittedly say I think more than anything, I totally missed B as being a rye. Not, not to go on a, a tangent, but. I'll throw that out as I, I missed that more than anything. I did. And I swore that C was a wine finished whiskey. <laughs> we'll get to the tasting notes, but yep. I swore it That's was a funny. wine finished whiskey. Now, one was baby Saz. I said, since you have the answers, I'll go first, which doesn't happen that often. But I said, this was fruity, light. It doesn't feel like high proof. It was super fruity on the finish. I just wrote fruity bomb, peach, plum, cherry, 
finish doesn't have a lot of bite, but just enough. I felt like I was biting right into a piece of fruit as I was sipping this. It, it just everything about it was a fruit bomb. I think knowing that this is 30 bucks makes me like it even more. It was just really enjoyable out of the three that were in there. That one was the most approachable as well. For sure. My notes, nose wise, it was somewhat young, had a youth to it, either however you want to look at it. Beyond that, picked up some fruit. I really thought that there was uh, some peach and apricot to it. And then kind of layered behind that was some mix of a vanilla creamish type thing going on. Palette wise, up front, it was just really sweet. Uh, the note that yeah. I had that just stood out predominantly was it was more almost like a passion fruit tea, but it, it would have been strictly floral, no herbal qualities to it. Those fruited teas, I don't know if it's an artificial flavor or not, but regardless, that's what this really seemed to, to lock in me as. I agree. For mm. B, which ended up being the Knob Creek Rye, so I don't have a lot of notes on this because I had a chalky mouthfeel, and when I get the chalky mouthfeel, I immediately am like out. I take a sip and it feels dry and it feels chalky and I'm like, yeah, peace. You do you. I also said it had a weird finish. Nose wise, again, had a little bit of youth showing. Uh, I did think it had youth showing as well, which was interesting that it's a Knob Creek Rye. I thought that this one seemed to have a little bit of that sawmill kind of effect to it. Also had noticeable barley behind that. And then a, a pretty solid you know, alcohol kick sitting in there, which... These are 115 proof, so that should make sense to a degree. Palette-wise, when it first hit, there was just a flash of sweet, but that flash kind of moved out rather quickly, led to a, a, nice, a nice swift kick right in the palate, and then it moved to a much more of a uh, herbal and, and earthy type space as it moved to the back of the palate. And I didn't have any better way to put this, but as it got to the back, it, it really just seemed to have a, a popping pepper feel to it, uh, almost like Pop Rocks, but much more peppery, kickish alcohol you know, component to it, however you want to look at it. But it definitely jumped off the tongue with that feeling. And finish-wise, I, I put it down literally just because it hung around for so long. There was a strong singe that, that lingered for a bit. I didn't get much in the way of a, a profile out of it, uh, but you knew something had been there, you know, that kind of feeling, which I guess maybe equates to almost a Kentucky hug, but it didn't really make it down for me. It just sat at the very back of the palate. That's fair. For the will it, I said, 100% this has to be finished in something. Is this sweet wine? The nose is interesting. It was very just sweet and a lot of burn. A lot of what I got from it, it was like a hot, sweet. I know that's not specific tasting notes, but compared to A, I think the problem too is this is a good practice in the way that you're setting things up, A, B, and C, because when you have something so fruity in the beginning and then you have something so hot at the end, I think your palate sometimes in a blind can be swayed where you're like, well, this is so much different from the first one I had. I almost think like, okay, if we had the will at first and we had the baby sass third, or we had that Knob Creek third, is the order going to be a little bit different? I don't necessarily think so because the way that the, the rye, it, that finished kind of flavor to me was just a little off-putting. I, I normally don't feel anything negative towards a will at rye that's put out. It just had such a sweet finished feeling to me that you know how we feel about <clears throat> finished whiskey. I was just like, all right, I'm out. You know? No, I laughed because uh, I thought nose-wise, <clears throat> this didn't really actually have the youth compared to the previous two. Although at four Agreed. years, I, I, it's equally as if not younger than at least the Knob Creek ride. And maybe the baby says too. Nose-wise continued. It seemed to have, uh, you know, definitely a fruit and floral component. It, it had the same similar peach as the first one, but this one I thought had a lot more orange to it. And I didn't, I don't like using citrus because I think citrus to me is too broad of a term. It wasn't, you know, a lemon zest or tart. It was definitely much more of an orange type smell to it. Palette wise, it was noticeably a rye. And that's put rye, then a little bit of stringent and almost a little bit of piney to it. it had a little barley move in behind that. And, and then some heat really kicked in, and, and laughably, my last note for palate is, uh, John can even see this, just simply says, wine with a question mark. 
Um, And then my only other uh, really note for the finish was that the heat hung around relatively well. Uh, Not so much of the singe from the Knob Creek, but this one definitely had a heat that hung around to it as well. You still feel good with your ranking? Yeah, I I mean, it was blind and, and that's where I would go. I'm it's kind you. of funny seeing the the Willet profile, and I, I wonder, I guess, time frame of four year small batch rise this was, because I feel like that kind of piney and barley side I haven't seen in too many of the recent small batch four year rise. I definitely get other characters that you know fit the billing, so to speak. Absolutely, and I, I think from feeling a little questionable about what was sent at first, I, that's that's. Kind of one of the things about these blinds, it's at first you're like, what did this person send us? Did they send us all <laughs> like similar things? Or this was a blind that really made you rethink how you drink. I mean, I mean this after was, somebody sends you a sample of three different Maryland rice, you're always a little gun shy. Well, we never know what's going to happen when people actually send us a blind like this. And I have to tell you, we want to get back to doing this more because this is really fun. And it really makes you you think about things. I have like three bottles of baby Saz that I hardly go to. No, I laugh. I'm the same way. I, I've, I've got a big boy that I've had for forever. And I just laugh because I never reach for it. But anytime I'm at someone's house or even uh, at a bar when I was up in Chicago about a month ago with Tom, the, the bar was pretty limited. And we kind of looked at, you know, the six Wait, things. Wait, you saw ahead. Tom? Yeah, of course. Aw. But, that makes uh, me sad. I wish I saw Tom. So I look around and I'm like, ah, I'll go baby says. And he's like, that's what you're ordering? I'm like, well, I mean, it's only six things. There's not a whole lot else here. And, and it's probably only six bucks. And, and that's that's the, the ringer of the guaranteed easiest drinker on the table. It's like, ah, super easy palate. I know I'm going to enjoy it. Yeah, that's what I want to start the night with neat. I'm with you. Just want to remind everybody before we go, distilleryproducts.com provides us all our glassware. Thank you guys so much for that. They provide premium engraved and branded merchandise to the distillery industry for over 15 years. They have a wide selection of wholesale engraved glassware, barware, and flasks. They make and provide the highest quality product for an affordable price. And we can attest to that because we also get our Glen Cairns from them. They are the most trusted source for engraved Glencairn for the distillery industry, and they are also happy to announce that they've recently partnered with the Neat Glass, so they will have the first ever wholesale engraved Neat Glasses to the whiskey industry and spirits industry. So thank you so much, distilleryproducts.com. If you have something going on, make sure to check them out. They have great stuff at great prices. Zeke, anything you want to say before I close this out? Kyle. Thanks again so much. And again, our apologies for taking uh, forever and a day to get through this. But we got there. I told you we would. And again, uh, we certainly appreciate your gratitude as well as anyone else's. We always will get there. Sometimes we're dads. We get a little sidetracked. We see a squirrel. We will always get back to it. Kyle, can't thank you enough for listening. Can't thank you enough for sending this. Honestly, for everybody, this is one of the best things you can do for us because it's a hell of a lot of fun and we enjoy it. Go ahead and be a part of our community. Join our Facebook group, as we talked about earlier. Answer a couple questions. We'll let you in. Find us on Instagram at Dad's Drinking Bourbon, Twitter at Bourbon Dads, Facebook at Dad's Drinking Bourbon. Please follow us on your favorite podcast app. Please leave us an open and honest review, just like we openly and honestly review all the whiskey we drink, as you can tell. Zeke, where else can the folks find us? Good old Nashville, Tennessee. And uh, to continue on what John said earlier, the the best part of this, which we didn't mention, is it gives us content that we don't have to scratch our heads or our asses to come up with. Absolutely. <laughs> Cheers. Ciao.